Hey everyone, welcome to episode five of Quark Software's Close the Content Loop webinar series, our regular talks about all things content lifecycle management. My name is Emerson Welsh and I'm here with my colleague Sam Courtney. Hey Sam. Hey, how's it going Emerson? I'm good, how are you? I'm doing great. Excellent. And today it gives me great pleasure to welcome our fantastic guest speaker, Gareth Oakes, to close the content loop all the way from Queensland, Australia. Gareth is Chief Project Officer at GPSL, um, who are a global solution partner of ours in the government and legal, aerospace, and defence, manufacturing, publishing and finance industries. Welcome, Gareth. Hello, both. Thanks for the invitation. It's great to be here. Yeah, we really appreciate you taking the time to join us, Gareth. It's great to see you. OK, so. Today's question on Close the Content Loop is the mindset shift. Are you creating legal documents or legal content? And on introducing this question, I'd like to mention it's important to note that while we are focusing on the legal and standard sector as the example today, we're seeing this as a common theme that, that's agnostic to many industries, really, that includes laws and legislation, codes, standards and regulations, as I'm sure everyone will re realise as we uh, as we talk through. So. Um, Back to you, Gareth. Let's get started by getting a feel for the context here. Would you like to give us um, your expert view of this? Uh, well, it's a really complex sector, so um, so we can build the picture. I mean, what are the main challenges for producing content in a regulatory or statutory environment? Thanks, Emerson. And that's a great place to start. As a background, uh, regulatory and statutory information is created and distributed as legal instruments with full force of the law. As such, these foundational elements are steeped in legal traditions, which varies by jurisdiction. These traditions are often in place for very good reasons, but may sometimes conflict or cause friction with modern practices, such as digital delivery. I think a good way to think about these and solving these problems is to consider that legal information should be created as content and not documents. The distinction may seem subtle, but it is quite important and is actually a mindset shift. Digital transformation is the driving force behind this mindset shift as more demand is being placed on serving content to digital platforms in new and exciting ways. More frequently these days, we find digital is the primary output channel or at the very least is equally important a channel to print. Right, yeah. How easy is this for, um, for organisations to do right now? Yeah, great question. Um, unfortunately, this digital approach to content creation can be quite difficult for legal practitioners to adopt. Firstly, there are only limited selection of tools and technologies that are able to support these new digital content requirements. I think small teams can get by with office technologies, but this approach simply does not scale. Uh, secondly, the applications and business processes must be adjusted to suit those traditions we talked about. The constraints are unique to each jurisdiction. This adaptation of software to business practice is actually the opposite of what most software companies would recommend. It's usually more cost effective to adjust business processes to suit the software product rather than the other way around, which leads to a concern over budgets. In the worst case, we've seen organisations try and patch together their own homegrown systems, which has led to lengthy and expensive implementation projects and a heavy support and maintenance burden. Being able to expand into new delivery channels within a restrictive budget slows down the evolution process and can halt progress pretty quickly. The bottom line here is it's often difficult or impossible to change the established legal or regulatory processes and traditions to fit these new systems. Yeah, I mean, whichever way you look at it, that's just not going to happen, is it? There needs to be regulatory compliance and that would be broken if everyone had their own way of working. I mean, what, what are the symptoms you would typically see in um, problematic regulatory environments? Yeah. Yeah, so usually we'd find that the teams of lawyers, drafters and admin staff are working in an unstructured and monolithic version of desktop uh, applications like Microsoft Word. Um, Word is obviously the most common and familiar documentation software, but it's used to create flat content rather than componentized and reusable content modules. Um, so we think that's pretty much the root of the problem. OK, so can we dive a bit deeper into that, the, the monolithic document creation? Yeah, sure. Um, so a lot of that's around collaboration as well. And Office 365 has made significant strides in this area. But unless you are working online, it is really tough for large teams to collaborate openly and work efficiently on the same document set. There's also a lack of standardization. Um, so working autonomously without compliance control is wonderful because it allows people to do anything. But it's also awful because if people can do anything, they often will. So this presents major challenges when you are trying to create professional and quality documents at scale just becomes impossible to stick to standard templates and styles. 
Uh, then you've got formatting, and I'm sure many of our listeners would have wrestled with inane things like corrupted numbering, random styling errors, missing headers and footers, freezing and slowdown in the application, and so on. In professional environments, this means you need one or more formal QA steps to ensure that nothing has gone wrong in those documents you've been working on, which obviously adds cost. And finally, the potential to automate these unstructured documents is quite limited. These documents are not componentized or enriched. They don't have XML metadata, for example. So it could be quite challenging to have our computers perform clever automation with the contents. For example, we might like automatic management of glossary terms and definitions or automatic publishing to a website. We have actually encountered some clients using older desktop XML or structured content tools, uh, but we find these are often completely bespoke complicated to learn and use and difficult to support and maintain. Yeah, right. I mean, that, that's a really interesting point. There's clearly an inherent document in, in, a, in air quotes way of producing content here, which is seemingly difficult to mentally break away from for that industry. Um, can you tell us more about the specific issues that authors and creators in the legal sector are facing? Yes, I think anyone who's wrestled with word processes and legal texts should be able to recognise some of the common challenges. Let's start with structure. There may be quite complex structures in place that are used cons inconsistently, such as parts, chapters, divisions, subdivisions, and more. It can be challenging to ensure that all drafters are adhering to a similar and same common structure. Also, legal numbering and indents have very specific meaning. Ensuring the numbering and indents remain precise is really challenging with word processing tools. Most legal texts also make use of defined terms, which are often stored in the glossary and there may even be multiple glossaries. It can become very time consuming to manage these defined terms and ensure they are being used consistently and styled correctly. We find cross-references pose challenges too. Internal cross-references, meaning those within the same document, are manageable as long as your numbering doesn't screw up, but external cross-references can be quite difficult to validate. For example, where the referenced item has been changed during the drafting process, by the time you publish, you are now accidentally referencing something that has changed or no longer exists. We find equations, tables, and other exotic types of content have their own challenges, but really amendments and consolidations are where it gets very time consuming. Amendments are where one legal instrument will affect another. For an example, an amendment may contain new or modified language that needs to be incorporated into another base document. Handling all the possible complexities in an efficient manner is not easy. It usually becomes a tedious process involving spreadsheets to manage the process and copy and paste for consolidation. Few jurisdictions have a truly intelligent system that can also track past, present and future amendments. Real challenge. Yeah, it certainly does sound pretty challenging. I, I, I agree. I mean, from our point of view, we definitely see that complexity is one of the biggest hurdles to, to overcome as organisations climb that ladder of, um, of content maturity. Um, uh, we're fortunate as well because we can, um, we have a plugin for Microsoft Word, which enables us to um, to provide structured authoring within that. So that certainly helps all our web-based options. So um, making that sort of structured content authoring process so much simpler. Uh, okay, so let's, let's shift gears to talk about omni-channel publishing in this context and how it contributes to a content rather than a document creative process. And by the way, if you missed episode four of Closer Content Loop, we talk about omnichannel publishing in a lot more detail. So, um, so is omnichannel publishing a key issue in this sector? Oh, yes, absolutely. Users of legal and regulatory information are no different to the general public. They have tablets and smartphones and are connected to the internet. They are very highly dependent on instant access to the latest information, perhaps even more so than in many other industries. And this information is often technical, complex, and highly referenced in nature. Without a true digital experience, the readers of this type of content will need to flip between many documents or pages to find and absorb all of that information they need. It is often critical to also understand how the information has evolved over time due to the amendments and other such changes. The default format for legal information is pages or PDF. Obviously, these could be posted online, but doesn't really give a true digital experience. In fact, it can also be quite costly and labour intensive to publish documents as a true digital experience. Um, more generally, we will often see demands for users of this type of content to have it as print, PDF, Word, web, mobile, and even open data such as XML. Uh, more recently, in fact, there has been a shift to API delivery of content and even rules as code, where rules or rules like content becomes computable. Uh, this is a lot for any publisher to absorb. 
Anyway, regardless of the exact demands, we believe the key here is to use the correct tools and technologies to enable efficient and automated delivery of rich omnichannel user experiences. And that includes the needs we have today, as well as what we know is coming tomorrow. Very insightful. And evidence again that the types of content and the way we consume it is, is just changing all the time. Right, so I guess um, I guess the best way to explain the solution to content creation as opposed to document creation is to, to look at a real life use case of a mindset change um, being transformed into action. Uh, do you have um, a, a use case example you can talk us through, Kareth? Uh, yes, Emerson, great idea. So I'd like to talk about a government agency we have over here in the regulatory domain. They author and publish large volumes of complex consultation and policy papers, manage a large set of legal rules and draft amendments to these rules and consolidate these amendments on a very regular basis. They had reached the limits of unstructured authoring and migrated to an old XML document solution, but even then it was hard and challenging to cope with the needs of their business and stakeholder demands. After being brought in to analyse their current publishing environment, we proposed a pure web-based Quark publishing platform solution. This is collaborative in real-time nature and most critically built to support structured content. Yeah, sounds good. And what kind of difference has that made? Well, now we find they have a modern and efficient publishing environment that allows business users to collaborate effectively and produce high quality publications with minimal training and support. The authors can produce policy and legal documents in a very easy to use tags free structured authoring environment. These large teams of policy and legal experts are now very efficient, despite having little to no training in structured authoring. We are finding that even newcomers are trained and productive within the first week, which is a big improvement from the previous system. The Quark system is configured with powerful templates containing a complete set of professional publishing features to meet their complex policy and legal content needs. This includes support for things like legal numbering and referencing, amendments and consolidations, equations, tables, box text, rotated content, change tracking. I think you get the idea. It's very comprehensive. Of course, all of this is underpinned by proper, robust content management with truly intelligent version tracking, automated workflow controls, and dedicated web-based review and approval tools. The reliable and scalable content storage means high volume omni-channel publishing to print, PDF, Word, and the web. It can deal with hundreds or thousands of pages in length with a very prescribed life cycle and frequent publishing. It's all pretty impressive. Yeah, right, sounds, sounds great, Gareth. Yeah, thanks for that over, oversight. What a difference and shift in mindset can make to your whole content strategy. So um, let's let's take a look at three takeaways from um, from today's talk. So the first one is that you can create le uh, legal content, not legal documents, right? Right. So trying to shift your mindset from creating documents to creating content mm. is key. As a publisher of legal information, you're playing a critical part in a very important information supply chain. Recognising the value in your content rather than the documents you make really helps to unlock whole new ways of servicing your partners, customers and all the downstream users. Absolutely. And number two, this this really does keep popping up. Whichever industry we, we focus on, whatever we're talking about, uh, simplifying and streamlining and collaboration is just absolutely massive. Yes, yes, agreed. Legal content is obviously very complex, so the simpler you can make the process of creation, review and updates to the information, the more efficient and cost effective your entire publishing process will be. Obviously, your publishing solution needs to manage and adhere to all of the necessary complexities behind the scenes, but if you can simplify the way that your authors and drafters create and manage policy and legal documents, then you can really automate the whole publishing process as well as reap the benefits of a self-service and low support user experience. Right. And, and thirdly, um, amplify and enhance content delivery. Yeah, absolutely. It's back to that omnichannel one click publishing requirement. We're in a digital age now and users of legal and regulatory information are highly dependent on this instant access to the latest information. Your publishing solution not only needs to support the complexity, quantity and frequency of publications, but must be ready to handle all of the required digital delivery channels with the correct degrees of interactivity. And we're talking about being prepared for the unexpected needs of tomorrow, as well as the requirements we face today. Great takeaways, Gareth. Thanks for that. OK, well, let's take a look at some product information for both Quark and GPSL. Uh, Sam, would you like to give us an update on Quark publishing platform next gen first? Sure, Emerson. We've really started our feature editions for next year. 
One key improvement is the enhanced user interface that provides a more intuitive flow for users to create new content with guided process steps. This will significantly reduce the time to get new users developing their own tailored content and improve the creative development effort. It also helps to jumpstart content reusability and development of a component library strategy. Our existing user community was a key contributor to this new functionality and new users will find this to be a huge benefit to their future content management initiatives. Yeah, thanks, Sam. We really look forward to that coming in Q1. We're all super excited to see that coming through. Uh, and Gareth, why don't you tell us a bit about GPSL solutions and, and what you're working on right now? Oh, thanks, Emerson. We'd love to share a little bit of what GPSL has been involved with lately. But firstly, where have we come from? GPSL is a provider of structured content solutions across a range of industries, including legislative, regulatory, and government publishers. We provide consulting, software, and solutions to help solve the most challenging content problems. We've actually been active for 15 years now, with a team spread across four continents and seven countries. Today, we find ourselves working with a number of clients on a range of interesting solutions, including AI and machine learning, editorial systems, automated omnichannel publishing and digital delivery. The common thread for our clients is automation, speed and simplicity, while enabling lower costs and wider delivery of enriched digital products and services. We expect to see a continued drive for automation, enrichment and modular content, which is itself a response to unrelenting market demands for new and ever more sophisticated information delivery. Thanks, Gareth. Uh, that, that's great. And we're really excited to work with you. 2023 is going to be great. Uh, it, it was an absolute pleasure having you on Close the Content Loop. Thanks again for joining us. You're welcome, Emerson. It's been a pleasure. And thanks to you, Sam. We'll speak again in the in the new year. You bet. Thanks, Emerson. Happy holidays. <laughs> and to you. And, and thanks, everyone, for watching. Join us next time on Close the Content Loop. And don't forget to subscribe to our Quark Publishing Platform Next Gen YouTube channel for all the latest webinars and videos. And you can visit quark.com for more information about QPP Next Gen and get a demo. Take care, everyone. Thanks for watching.